Profits at China's steel mills were almost wiped out in the first half of this year. That spells more bad news for Australia's two biggest exports, coal and iron ore, whose prices have already tumbled by a quarter in 2012. And it raises more concerns the mining boom may quickly turn to bust. Neil Woolridge reports. China's steel mills have had a seemingly insatiable appetite for Australian resources, but now they're facing a serious bout of indigestion. The Chinese steel industry is reporting that profits slumped 96% in the first half of 2012. That's likely to put further pressure on the prices of its inputs, iron ore and coking coal, which have already tumbled by around a quarter this year. The market is at least adequately supplied, if not oversupplied, and what we're seeing is prices adjust accordingly. I think at the moment the sort of pessimism out there is somewhat overdone. Um, and in the case, for example, of iron ore, there is a, a sort of a, a market adjustment uh, mechanism in the sense that uh, the high cost producers, and they're primarily in China, uh, start to drop out of the market as, as prices come off. But evidence continues to mount that the global economic slowdown is spreading, with Taiwan reporting an unexpected fall in GDP during the June quarter. Commodity prices have also been affected by uncertainty over Europe and China's efforts to engineer a soft landing of its economy. Of course, in China at the moment, we're in this interregnum between the changeover of leadership, so that adds to the, the uncertainty. Uh, and as usual, uncertainty leads to uh, price pressure. That pressure is being felt most acutely by smaller miners like Atlas Iron and Fortescue, whose share prices have fallen by a half and one third respectively from their 2012 highs. Tim Schroeder says each company has its own specific issues. Atlas is looking at a costly expansion program, while Fortescue needs to find another $600 million in funding this year. And the market's just a little bit suspicious about can the company accommodate its very aggressive growth plans given its debt structure and will it need to come to market to raise equity to make sure that it can put in place those growth plans over the next few years. And John Robinson says the lower share prices of Australian companies could make them vulnerable to takeover bids. Uh, with projects overrunning in terms of cost and uh, certainly overrunning in terms of time, those uh, companies that have got operating entities um, where the risk is obviously already dealt with become attractive targets. Nathan Tinkler's takeover bid for Whitehaven Coal is one of several, though, that appears to be struggling, with questions over whether he too will be able to secure funding in the current environment. The backdrop for that's problematic in terms of falling coal prices. Will the company be able to generate substantial cash flows to pay the debt down? Um, you know, jury's out and people are very much looking at this as a glass half empty. As indeed many are viewing the entire resources sector as uncertainty and pessimism have replaced the unbridled optimism of just a few years ago.